Hello church, hello everyone. Welcome to another Wednesday evening service where we are going to be sharing the word. Uh, welcome to Prayer Nation. Thank you for joining us for those who are online. Thank you for joining us, those who are in the house. Amen. Um, it is indeed another Wednesday and a special Wednesday at that as we are nearing the Easter week. Amen. Not the, not the bunny with the eggs, but uh, the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we are in celebration of this momentous event, um, we're going to be teaching more or less within the same vein um, as we prepare for Easter and as we have come out of the seven day fast for those who joined us thank you and i pray that you were blessed i pray that um the reason for the fast was also as personal to you as it was to uh, myself and some of us uh who have you know um communicated that they were in a time where they felt that revival that um enrichment that uh rejuvenation if you may and it is fitting that we had that fast before we were getting into Easter. Amen. Um, and so uh, before we go any further, uh, please share the broadcast with your loved ones. Tell them that we are live, um, that we have a special service for you tonight. And if you can, please join. Even if you join in the middle. Amen. We have guests in the house. Amen um that are joining us those the regulars are also in the house amen and i don't know about you but i'm also you know looking forward to this easter i think this year you know it goes without saying but we have said it i have said it before that we are I, i'm expectant for a lot this year amen i am expectant personally and i am expectant for what god wants to do in his people amen and for the kingdom and so with that same excitement is how I stand before you and how, you know, in general, we communicate with others. We live our lives out there. And it's more or less what, we, what I'm going to be uh, speaking about tonight. Um, and so before we get into the service, uh, I'd just like to uh, read this scripture and then we pray. Amen. And so our first scripture, if you can put it on the screens, um, it's going to be coming from the book of Jeremiah 32, verse 17 to 20. And this, it, to give you context, Jeremiah had just purchased a piece of land and he was giving praises, praises to God. And it says, Our sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You show love to thousands, but bring the punishment for the parents' sins into the laps of their children after them. Great and mighty God, whose name is the Lord Almighty, great are your purposes. This is the part that I want to emphasize. Great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. Your eyes are open to the ways of all mankind. Your re you reward each person according to their conduct and as their deeds deserve. You performed signs and wonders in Egypt and have continued them to this day in Israel and among all mankind and have gained renown that is still yours. Amen. The title of today's message is Your Journey Continues. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for tonight and we thank you for the week that we are in. We do not take it for granted, Father, that we are here and we are able to speak with you, not to talk up to you, that we are able to speak with you and we are able to have a relationship with you, that even during this time, you are yearning for those who will serve the kingdom. You are yearning for those who will willingly go out and speak your word. You are yearning for those who are going to preach what you would like to come down from the throne of grace. And therefore, Father, we pray for your grace to come down even this evening. 
We pray for your grace to come down even this week. We pray that you show yourself in this week that everything that you have planned for us, that we might not know, we may make programs and plans and schedules and rosters, but at the end of the day, it's the kingdom roster that is important. And therefore, Father, may we be locked into the kingdom roster. May you align us with the king program of heaven. May you put us on the schedule of blessings, on the schedule of teaching, on the schedule of us being able to liaise and communicate with each other and be an impact to each other on this earth as it is in heaven. And I pray, Father, that even as we go into this week, as we go into this weekend, Father, may what you have planned for us come to fulfillment. May it come into fruition. Father, every plan that you have, may it be something that inactivates, in, be enacted in us, each and every individual that is under the sound of my voice. And Father, as you have planned, may you play, make us part of your plans as long as we are willing and able. We come before your throne of grace. And even as we get into the word, Father, may my utterance be from your throne. May my utterance be inspired of the Holy Spirit. May I decrease and may you increase. May what you want to minister to your children be what is communicated tonight. And even this week, may you cons constantly communicate with us as we eat, as we talk, as we work, as we sleep. May you be the center. May you be the center. May you be the driver. And may you be the one that brings results, Father. May we yearn for results that push forward the kingdom, that don't push all forward our own agenda or our company's agenda or our king or our nation's agenda. But may we push the kingdom agenda. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And so, as we were saying in the beginning, thank you for joining us. And today, as I said, um, the word was inspired by something I saw in, um, in my family group. Um, in in my, my mom had, uh, goes to Methodist. And last week, uh, last weekend actually, they had a procession where the mule, uh, like Palm Sunday, amen, where the mule rode through the city with Jesus on its back, amen. But this had a twist to it, or rather, it was literally a mule <laughs> that they took, and it was walking in the city, in that little village where, where my grandmother stays, because my mom was there, amen. And they had a mule literally do a procession from somewhere within the village up to the church. Amen. And they were throwing palms on the ground. And, you know, they were celebrating. And she sent a video where they were singing hymns and they were praying and, and, and so on and so forth. And it just, you know, it, it touched me that, you know, this is a generation before ours. And their understanding of the practicality of things and envisioning what literally took place in that time when Jesus was alive, when the procession was happening. Amen. And it just touched me because even then we started talking about the significance of that act and what it meant when, when you know, Jesus rode on the donkey, you know, foretelling what was going to happen, you know, as he was going to be crucified um, less than two weeks later. Amen. And so as we were discussing that, you know, uh, even earlier this week, we were talking, uh, me and the missus, and she, she was like, I wonder, like, so is their favoritism, was their favoritism in the disciples? And, and I asked, why, would you, why did you, do you say that? She's like, no, because there was, you know, John, and there was Peter, <laughs> you know. And, and so I was like, oh, you know what, to an extent, but even as we were speaking, I was like, oh, that is fascinating. And then I asked, and I was like, God, why was that? You know, and, and it seemed like there were quote unquote factions, you know, sects within the disciples. 
But then I started, you know, as I was sitting and, and thinking about that, you know, doing other things. And then, you know, it was sort of revealed that, no, it's the same anywhere where you have a circle of people that you associate with. And when you associate with people, you don't associate with one person when you associate with another. My relationship with Pastor Carlos is different from my relationship with DJ Brandon. Amen. But it doesn't mean that they are not important to me in the same way. They have their significance in the role that they play. And so I went back to my wife. I was like, no, I think I have a revelation here. It wasn't necessarily that they were the favorites, but they had a purpose. They fulfilled a office that already existed, a position that needed to be filled based on character. And the one person that I started to sort of dwell on a bit more was Peter. And to give you a bit of history on Peter, for those who might not know, you, I mean, we all did Sunday school. We some, somewhat did Bible knowledge in high school, you know, all throughout our lives, we've kind of known the stories. But in, in, in the case of Peter, his name was not even Peter. Amen. I'm sure mo most of us or all of us know that. It was Simon. Amen. But the name Peter was given by Jesus. And we can safely say that it was a name almost like a title. Because when we translate what Peter is in I think it was Aramaic, it was Cephas. And what does Cephas mean? It means the rock. And the rock in Greek, which the Gospels were written in, in Greek, Cephas translates to Peter in Greek. Amen. And so already Jesus was foretelling who Simon was going to be. So in essence, he put a title on him. Just like if you put a title on Pastor Carlos. He is still Carlos, the name he was given by his mother and father. Amen. But the title now represents the mission, the ministry in which he was put into. And so it's the same with Peter being the rock. And we all know that the rock in this instance did not only stand for where the church would be built, but also his character. Amen. If you look at his character, Peter was very enthusiastic. In, in Shona, you know, you could almost say, sorry to say, Apostle Peter, but Amen. <laughs> he was very forward. Amen. And we will see this through, if you read the Gospels, you will see that, no, 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 for real. You know, the dude cut off someone's ear. Amen. There's no <laughs> greater being forward than that. Amen. And so he was enthusiastic. He was someone who was on fire for the gospel. But the funny thing is he wasn't even the first one that was called. Who was the first one that was called? Amen. Any takers, any Bible school uh, students? Amen. Clearly we need to do more. Uh, uh, <laughs> we need to do more. Uh, <laughs> More Bible study, amen. It was his brother, amen. It was Andrew. And Andrew is actually the one who went back to Simon Peter and told him, brother, I have seen the Messiah, amen. And then he invited him. And as soon as Simon witnessed Jesus, he was like, I am leaving everything, amen. When he witnessed the miracle with the fish, amen. And so the reason why I keep going on about Peter is going to be the center of what we're going to be talking about. Amen. Even though Peter was on fire for Jesus. Amen. Just like when most of us were born again, I remember even back in the day when I was born again, I was on fire to the extent that I would look for, you know, coming from the world, I was a very big, still am, a very big hip-hop fan. Amen. And so because... Hip hop was such a big part of my life. I researched and searched for gospel hip hop 
And that's how I discovered CHH. DJ Brandon will understand what I mean, but CHH is basically Christian hip hop, amen? And so I sought after that because I had found something that was better than where I was coming from. And so I was still on, I was on fire for Jesus. I was on fire for God. And I would serve anywhere and everywhere. I think I've mentioned before that every single ministry that I have been part of, I was part of some form of service, whether it was in the sound team, whether it was media team, whether it was in the choir, whichever position I could put myself into and get involved in the things of God, I would do so. Amen. And so it, it reminds me of this. And so if you relate to that as well, you are a Peter. Maybe not to the extent that Peter did things, amen. But to an extent, Peter was very passionate. He was passionate as a, you know, at, at this stage, probably they were in their late, mid to late 20s, amen. Most of the disciples. Okay, Bible school is definitely needed. Amen. <laughs> they were in their late 20s. Amen. And so these people had lived 20 something years of their lives on either doctrine or the world. And so there was unlearning that needed to be done in these few years that they were going to spend with Jesus. So I, 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 this is important for us to, 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 to grasp because there is a zeal that you come with when you're coming from the world. Amen. There is a zeal that you come with when you are passionate in general. I have a sister who is passionate. Amen. We went to an interview. I, I don't know if you remember Pastor Carlos. We went to an interview. We did training. You know, we passed the interview, all of us. We did training. And then after the training, they would pick people based on the characteristics that they discovered during that training process. And unfortunately, my sister did not make it. And I was, I wouldn't say privileged, but I got to know why they didn't take her in. Amen. And they said, she is too loud. <laughs> Amen. But it wasn't necessarily that she is loud. Her character was almost overbearing in that she is a person of the people. She exhibits this togetherness that she can't contain it. Every time we go to her house, we don't leave empty handed. She will go into her pantry and get, ah, do, do you guys need rice? Ah, do you guys need, I, I bought this pork, you know, cheap at this butcher that I know. I, I bought this chick, I bought these, this cooking oil. I've got like five bottles, you can grab one. She is generous. She is giving, not only in things, but even in herself. And so she was friends with everyone at that training interview thing. Amen. But people that didn't understand her character mistook it for being too overzealous, for being too loud, for being a, a, an outward character, extroverted, too extroverted. But she was just in the wrong place where her gift would not serve its purpose. Amen. And that's the major reason why we are talking about this today. We all have characters. We all have characteristics that we have. The disciples each had an individual characteristic that they possessed that Jesus took them in for. And so Peter had a certain characteristic that if he went to a certain place and people were to meet him, they would say, but how come, how is this dude a follower of Jesus? He's just everywhere. You know, he's telling everyone what to do. He is because if you, if you, again, Bible knowledge, if we, Peter was the de facto leader of the disciples. Amen. He's the one who would be given instructions by Jesus. He's the one who would tell the disciples where to go and what to do. Amen. But what people might not have known, or even as you're reading the Gospels, what you might not have seen was that this was in preparation for who he was going to be. Remember what we said about his name. His name is Peter. He is the rock. Amen. 
Not only was he hard or hard-headed, but he was also the foundation, a strong foundation on which the church was going to be built. And so all these things that he would do, I'll give you some examples, all these things that he would do during their ministry as the disciples when they were walking with Jesus would be mistaken for being too overzealous or being too forward or not being a person of the kingdom. For example, in several instances, he, he was rash. And so there's an example here. It was Peter that left the boat because he wanted to prove something that, no, I believe in you, Jesus. It's almost like he was trying to show Jesus that, yes, you are the Messiah, and I know it. <laughs> Amen. It's almost like he was trying to convince himself by convincing Jesus. Amen. And there's a conflict that I believe this is not anywhere in the Bible. This is just me from, from studying him and, and, and reading. I believe there was a conflict within Peter that he believed so much. And because of the 20-something years that he had on this earth where he hadn't experienced the Messiah and he had just heard about the Messiah from, you know, Old Testament, uh, from word of mouth, from his parents probably, from other believers and so on, from him going to the synagogue. He had heard about the Messiah and now it was happening. I don't know about you, but if it were you in this day and age, how do you think you would act when Jesus is standing right there? Amen. I believe as well, I would, I would try to show that I'm the most Christianist Christian in the world. Amen. I, I would do my best to, to, to show that, you know what, I've always believed in you, Jesus. You know, I've always known that you are real. I am here. You know, send me anywhere. I will never betray you. I will never, you know, do anything that embarrasses the kingdom. Amen. So this, this was Peter in a nutshell. So he went out of the boat to try and show that I believe and I am going to walk just as Jesus is walking. But the moment he looked elsewhere, instead of focusing on Jesus, he started to drown. Amen. I know we have many interpretations of what that means, you know, if you don't keep your eyes on Jesus, you're going to fall and so on and so forth. But in this context, you know, he, 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 he just looked away for a second because what made him go out into the water might not have necessarily been faith. It was more of the Peter in him that told him to go out there. Like, no, I know if Jesus is doing it, I can also do it. Amen. And it was also Peter who took Jesus aside to rebuke him for speaking about his own death. Amen. So the week that we're in is most likely when it happened. Amen. When Jesus told them, the disciples, that I'm going to, I'm not going to be with you for, any, for much longer. Amen. This is found in Matthew 16, verse 22. You can read on about it when you get time. But this was also another instance of Peter being Peter. Amen. Being more Christian than Christ. Saying, no, 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 Jesus, no. You can't die. You are the Messiah. Amen. It was also Peter who suggested that they put up tents. Do we remember when that was? Yes. The transfiguration. Amen. Zeal. Overzealous. Amen. It was also Peter who drew a sword and attacked one of the, the guards when they came to take Jesus, amen. Same instance, overzealous. He was impatient and he, even though he had been told, amen. And if we recall previously in the same week that we are talking about, when he, Jesus spoke about who, uh, what was going to happen to him. If you recall, Jesus asked, what do people, who do people say I am, amen. And they told him. And then he asked, what, is, what was this question? Who do you say I am? Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, he responded, you are the Messiah. Amen. And this was Peter not being Peter now. And he spoke what actually was. But isn't it funny that soon after all that, he's the same person who said, but no, Jesus, <laughs> don't say that you're going to die or that you're not going to be with us. And he's the same person that took out his sword 
And in that same instance, when he said that the disciples scattered, Peter was the same one who said he would never forsake Jesus. This is in Matthew 26, verse 33. He said, I would never forsake you. I would never leave you. And then Jesus told him, look, I'm sure in his heart, Jesus was like, my child, I love you. But guess what? You're actually going to deny me three times before the cock crows. And Peter was like, never. Minangiti, never. And never not happening. Amen. And so the reason why we talk about this, is this not a reflection of our own lives? Amen. <laughs> Who can relate to this as a Christian? Amen. How many times have we seemed like we know everything and we would never, especially when we are beginning, amen, when we are still experiencing, you know, when we're coming from life experiences that had nothing to do with Jesus to life experiences when we rely on Jesus. That even when we rely on his word, even when we rely on, on, on what the kingdom dictates, we still falter and we will still fail and we will still feel like some, we're being let down. We, I had an interesting conversation with my wife and she was saying, you know, she asked me, have you ever at any point felt like, you know, this Christian thing, <laughs> I don't know if it's for me. It's getting too heavy for me. Amen. I think we were talking about Kanye and, and you know, what happened with him and the reasons why he is doing what he's doing now and his reasons, he, in brief, he's saying that, you know, at my darkest hour, I didn't see Jesus. In my darkest hour, Jesus let me down. I lost my wife. I lost my kids. I lost money. I lost status. And no one came to my rescue, not even you Christians. Amen. And yet I was doing everything for God. He had a gospel album. He was doing Sunday service every week, you know. And so he felt like he had dedicated his life for that short period. But he felt like he had dedicated his life to the kingdom and the kingdom let him down. Amen. And so that's what we were talking about. And, you know, I, I, I pondered and I was like, fortunately or unfortunately, <laughs> And we, yeah, I think we had actually, yes, so the, the conversation stemmed from a joke that we saw where the stand-up comedian was like, you know, uh, why is it that when God tested Job, the devil took everything from him except his wife? And one of the demons was like, okay, but you are not finished, uh, devil. What about the wife? And he's like, ah. <laughs> This one is actually worse than me taking his whole family. Amen. <laughs> so she was, she was just asking, you know, like, if you were put in the same situation, and then I think that's when we started talking about Kanye and the persecution that he faced and so on and so forth. And so it came back to that, that have I ever faced anything that would make me question God? Amen. And I looked back and I was like, you know, maybe in my earlier days, but I've never renounced or denied Christ or the kingdom. It was more of, but God, why am I being left behind? Why am I being left out? And I, I know I was still young, and so it was difficult for me to understand certain things, you know, that there is a time for everything, a time to sow and a time to reap. Amen. And so we were just having that discussion. And so... That is pretty much what then brought us to the point that we are at. That with Peter, with, in his zeal, there were things that were still Peter about him. Amen. Sorry, there were things that were still Simon about him. Peter had not yet been mani fully manifested. Amen. Because the Peter that we will see ahead is the Peter that Jesus named. That is the Peter who would now fulfill the title that he had been given of the rock. Amen. Not Dwayne Johnson. Amen. And so as we move forward, we all know what happened. Jesus was then arrested. And we're going to talk more about it, obviously, during Easter. And 
Jesus was then arrested and Peter was chilling with a group of people and they asked, I've seen you with, with Jesus. Are you not one of the disciples? Denied once. Second group, same thing, denied. Third group, same thing, denied. The cock crows and Peter felt ashamed. And at that time, that's when what Jesus had spoken about was fulfilled, where the disciples were scattered. But what then happened when Jesus resurrected? Amen. They all were brought back together. By who? Amen. By Jesus. And he is the only one who is able to bring our purpose out of us. Because without him, they were just individuals. They were just Simon. They were just Andrew. They were just John. They were just Mark and so on and so forth. But the moment Jesus came back and he gave them the great commission, amen, they now were in their purpose. So your journey continues, brothers and sisters. It does not matter the pit stop. It does not matter what the world is thrown at you. It does not matter that they are talking about Jesus on Twitter and saying Christ is king, and yet they are talking about something else. Amen. I digress. I'm sure those who know, you know. Amen. The whole situation with Israel. Amen. Where they're trying to use Christ is king to actually insult the Israelites. Amen. Amen. And so we, we are living in our purpose in this time. And as long as Jesus is Jesus, who we are, what has been placed on us, whether it is the pastor title, whether it's the apostle title, whether it is the sir title, whether it is the whatever title or office that you're supposed to serve in the kingdom, it is still alive today, but only through Jesus. Our purpose in life is only activated or enacted only through Jesus. Because we see when they went to look for him in the tomb, Mary and them, when they went, they were told he is not here, he is alive. It's almost like, what are you doing here? You know, did, we, did he not say? It's almost like sometimes Jesus is like, but I keep telling you guys these things. Why don't you just trust what I say and actually do it? Because they still went to the tomb, even though he had told them, I'm going to resurrect. You're going to see me again. Amen. And it took Jesus to bring them back. And even though they saw him these number of times, because he showed himself to Mary first, Mary went and told people, but people didn't believe her. He showed himself to a second group. They also didn't believe him. He showed himself to a third group. They still didn't believe. And eventually the disciples were brought back together. But the only way he could prove that it was him, because like Apostle was preaching about on Sunday, his countenance was too bright. He, could, he was unrecognizable. He was no longer the dude they used to walk around with. Amen. His, his, his whole appearance was too holy for them to recognize the same person they walked around with. And so he had to show them the scars that were on his hands and his feet and on his side. Amen. And they literally had to put their hand in his flesh to see that this is Jesus. Amen. And so I don't know who it is that needs to place their hands in his flesh. Amen. <laughs> and to see his scars, to understand that, no, he is alive in our day and age. You do have a purpose. He knows what he has in you that needs to be fulfilled. And you can be a Peter or maybe you're a John or maybe you're a Mark. But at the end of the day, there is something that he wants to do through you for the glory of the kingdom. There's something that we were talking about at home where, unfortunately, we are living for the results. So it goes back to the conversation we're having about Kanye. That the problem that I believe that Kanye experienced when he did not get what he expected from believing in Jesus, which is getting his family back, keeping his money and so on, he believed in those results. And he believed that the reason, most likely, the reason why he was worshipping God and doing all these things was for a reward of some sort. 
Amen. But the whole entire purpose of us being Christians and for us serving the kingdom is so that we can bring people to God. Let me rephrase that. Back to God. Back to where we came from. Just like when Jesus came back and he showed the disciples, even though they had been scattered, just as he had prophesied, he is the same one who brought them back to each other. And that was the birth of the church when he ascended. If you can put the scripture on their screens, I'm sure it's there in the notes. Um, I think it's yeah, Mark 16, verse 15 to 18. It says, he said to them, go into all world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. And these are the signs. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. So what is stopping us, brothers and sisters, from fulfilling exactly what this is saying? Amen. Because the Great Commission is simply that. It is the mandate that we were given when Jesus came back to bring us back together. And he said, I leave you the Holy Spirit, that he shall be your companion. Just as Jesus was with the disciples. Amen. He taught them firsthand so that as they move around into the world. And, and with Peter, we can see what he then started to do when he had now been reignited as Peter and not as when he was back to being Simon. Amen. When he was back to being Peter, we can see, I'm sure I shared this, uh, Peter, so Jesus promised that Peter would be foundational in building the church and it was fulfilled in these three stages. Amen. I think I didn't share that. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. That was the first fulfillment. Amen. The second one was that he was present when the Samaritans received the Holy Spirit. And finally, he was summoned to the home of the Roman centurion, Cornelius, who also believed and received the Holy Spirit. So this is when Peter was unleashed as Peter as the rock. This is when Christianity officially began. Amen. And in this way, he was unleashed into the three different worlds that, if we think about it, still exist to this day. And these are the Church of the Jews, the Samaritans, and the Gentiles. Amen. And in this way, we can classify them this way. The Orthodox. Amen. The Samaritans are you know, the ones that say, look, we are here, the, 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 the overzealous, the ones that will say, no, we are the ones that know. Amen. And then the Gentiles who are the unbelievers. Amen. And so this great commission that they had just previously been told, told at the ascension is what then he initiated Christianity with. And those three pillars are the ones that were activated and we still are active today. Amen. Because we don't only minister to the world, but we minister to each other and we minister to those who believe they know. Amen. The ones that either think that science is the answer or, you know, uh, belief in, in, in evolution is the answer and so on. And so in essence, what we're basically saying is that we are on the same journey. And your journey continues, just like Peter's journey continued. And so don't lose heart. Don't think that when you falter or you face certain things, even though you are a believer, there are things that you will do for the kingdom and maybe the results that you expected don't come. But remember what you are doing it for. It is not for you to get a reward or a result. The result and the reward are already up there. Amen. We are just doing this to be brought back to him. That's it. 
We are just supposed to be reconnected to where we came from. That is the whole purpose of us believing in God. It's like how scientists are still to this day seeking answers for where the universe came from. Amen. <laughs> because we want to understand where we came from, but we already know where we came from. It's just being hard-headed where people don't want to accept where we came from. So we, our mandate as a Christian, not me as a pastor only, but as a Christian, you as well as a Christian, you who's watching as a Christian, that is your mandate. Finish and clap. We are to bring the world back to God. And so let us not lose our way in thinking that our purpose is to be wealthy or to be rich. or to, That doesn't come first. If you are to be wealthy for the sake of the kingdom, we were told the other week about um, the, the, the man of God who wanted to be a, 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 a pastor, and then God told him, no, I want you to fund the kingdom, the work of the kingdom. Amen. So he is wealthy, filthy wealthy. Amen. And he's serving his purpose, just like P how Peter served his purpose as the rock. So do you have a purpose as well. Amen to serve in your potential. And so our journey is supposed to be continuous where the word journey comes in. It is something that is going on. And so let us not, let us not lose heart. Let us use this week to reflect. And I pray that we also use the week that we are fasting to also reflect on that and understand that our purpose is an ongoing process. Amen. And when I, when I got born again, I staunchly believed that my purpose was in music and I was going to be the, one of the greatest Christian hip-hop artists of all time because I so believed that in music is where my ministry was. Amen. And that I was going to make some music that God was going to anoint the things that God would be saying would be coming straight from the throne of grace and out through my lips and onto a CD. Amen. We still had CD. For those that don't know, there were things that were called CDs. Amen. And onto that CD and through your speakers that God was going to speak and to minister. Amen. And I didn't think anything else was going to cut it. I never thought I would stand before, uh, you know, in front of a pulpit. I never thought I would be out there evangelizing. I never thought I would be in a, in, a, in a church. Not that I didn't do it before. I would do it, but I believed that my main purpose was that. And so the reason for saying all this is that your purpose is an ongoing process. It is ongoing the reason why Jesus left us the Holy Spirit is for him to tell us the next. A journey is one foot in front of the other. Amen. And so our daily lives are us and the Holy Spirit walking hand in hand, one foot in front of the other. Amen. And all we need to do is listen and ask, what am I going to be doing next? What do you want me to do now? Who should I speak to now? What? should I be doing at this present moment? Who am I going to be blessing? Amen and amen. And so I pray we understand our purpose. That our purpose is simply to bring creation back to God. Amen. And one important thing, we cannot do it with our own strength. Because in as much as we might think we know him, we don't. We can only know him by hearing from him. And therefore, everything that he needs us to know, we need to hear directly from him. And he will fulfill it in the time that he has put forward. Amen. In the time that he has set apart for us to minister. And so I'd like us to pray, amen, as we come to close. Let us pray that we get to have that relationship that is the same way that when Jesus came back to the disciples, he comes to us so that he can show us our potential and he can give us 
the Holy Spirit and that we walk with him daily, giving or being given instruction on what to do. Because then and only then we will be fulfilling our purpose. We say, Father, we come before you this evening. Thank you for the right? Thank you that we are alive and that we are able to serve the kingdom. That we are alive and that we are able to be part of this great commission. That we are alive and that we get to know you in depth. That we are alive and we get to understand who we are. That we don't wander the earth aimlessly without understanding why we are even in creation. But knowing that there is a higher calling that is in us. And that all that we need to do is bow down. Is to submit to you. Is to fulfill to submit to you so that we can fulfill our kingdom mandate our purpose is to bring creation back to you and therefore father i pray that in each and every one of us may you activate may you activate that thing that may have been dormant may you activate that gift that may have not been revealed yet may you activate that thing in us that has been yearning to praise you that has been yearning to get people to understand you. That may have been yearning to get people to know who you are. That may have been yearning for people to know who they are personally. May you activate that thing that has been dormant that helps us to love one another, that helps us to be brothers and sisters to each other. That thing that was in us that helps us to know that the world is wicked in its ways, but through you, May it will be holy. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit ministers to each and every individual that is listening at this moment. That even now as we are praying, Father, may you go into each and every single person who might not have known who they are, who might not have known what they are supposed to do, and who might have been questioning and doubting who they are in general who might have been questioning and doubting if they even have a purpose in your kingdom, who might have been questioning whether they even have the same ability to conquer or to overcome any obstacle that comes before them, that might not have known or believed that they have something to offer to this world, that might not have believed that they can, that they can do something, that they can become someone. I pray, Father, that at this very moment, may you touch that person. May you touch that person who might have been looking down on themselves and thinking that I am no one, I am nothing. I have nothing that I am going to do that is going to contribute to the kingdom. Father, in Jesus' name, I release them from that thought. May you visit each and every household, every person that may have been lacking, that may have been wobbling, that may have been backsliding, Father, I pray in Jesus' name, may you go into their hearts. May you go into their minds. May you go into their spirit and activate the rock that is in them. May you activate the title that is in them. May you activate the Peter that is in them. That is great. That stands for greatness. That is going to have a story in history of greatness. Oh Lord Jesus, I know that you are at this very moment going into each and every individual story and correcting it, the trajectory of their journey. Father, I pray that even at this time, I pray that if we were losing strength, if we were losing faith, if we were losing hope, Father, may you give us that strength. May you renew our strength. May we mount up on wings like eagles. And may we soar once again. Father, if even those that may have been overzealous just like Peter, Father, if they feel any disappointment, Father, I pray, I pray, Father, that you forgive them. And I pray that they see forgiveness in their hearts for any ill that anyone might have done to them to make them feel as if they do not and cannot worship you, that they cannot follow you, that they cannot pray to you. If there was anyone felt that way, 
I pray right now in Jesus' name, may you reignite in them. May they touch your side and see your wounds. May they feel your flesh and know that you are God. May they be reignited again. May they have that faith once again. May they have that sunshine, that fire reignited in them. May there be life in their eyes once again. I speak peace to any life that may have been facing turmoil. I speak peace, 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 peace be still. Peace be still, peace be still, peace be still, peace be still. I speak peace where there was a storm in anyone's life. Right now, I know there's someone who lost someone recently. And they feel, why would God do this when I have been serving, when I have been studying his word, when I have been praying to him daily? In Jesus' name, I pray for peace. I pray for peace that is beyond understanding. Peace that, peace that no human can bring. Peace that only you, Holy Spirit, can bring to that person. I speak that peace in Jesus' name. I speak that peace to the person in Jesus' name. I speak. I pray that peace overwhelm them. Because only through that peace, for Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. And therefore, when that peace is in them, you are there. Just like you were there with the disciples and they saw you and they acknowledged and they believed that the Messiah has risen. And therefore, I speak that peace. I speak that peace. I speak that peace. May you have peace. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being present tonight. I thank you that you have spoken your word. And those who have ears to hear have heard. And those who are going to act are going to act. In your time, Lord Jesus. In your time. I praise you and I thank you. We pray to be thankful because you, we know that the things we will be saying have already been done. Amen. And therefore, Father, I thank you for tonight. And I thank you for this week. And I thank you for the past week where we were fasting. And may you answer each and every person's prayer. May you meet them at their point of need. Ah, you are going to do something this year, Lord Jesus. You are doing something this year. And I thank you for it. This we pray in Jesus' name and for the glory of the kingdom. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen and amen. Thank you those who joined us online. Thank you those who came to the auditorium. I pray that you were blessed. I pray above all that God ministered to you and not Pastor TK. Amen. I pray that that purpose in you is either activated or reignited or that fire is fueled even more. Amen and that we become the Peter that we need to be. Amen. And I'm using Peter as a metaphor, amen, as a title. Amen. And that we become the us who we are meant to be, that we are supposed to be. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us. And I pray that you will join us once again during our Easter conference. It's beginning on Friday. We're going to be starting at 6, 6.30. Amen. On Friday evening, 6.30 to 8. And then on Saturday, it's going to be from the same time, I believe, 6.30 once again to 8. And then on Sunday, we're going to have our main service. That will be from 8.30 until roughly 10. Um, but we'll be moving as the Spirit leads. Amen. And so please feel free to join us. Um, the, the poster will be on your screens uh, if you need the dates and the times 
as well. Uh, at the end of this broadcast, we're going to put up the poster um, and you're going to see uh, it's going to be the same uh, Pastor Carlos, Pastor TK, Apostle, and Pastor Wu. Amen and amen. And once again, be blessed. Hope you have a great week and we'll see you on Friday. Those who are able to join us uh, in the auditorium. If you're not able to come through, if you're not in Cape Town, uh, you can still join us online. We will be streaming on all platforms, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. And TikTok is coming soon, uh, so watch this space. Amen. Be blessed. We'll see you on Friday. Amen. Thank you.